Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of the Virtual Engagement Ideas Summit. I already know what I'm going to call this one. Um, I have invited Kim Acock to speak to us today. I saw Kim for the first time at an American Camp Association conference, and I was a member of the audience, and Kim was on stage, and I was blown away with the presentation. So I asked Kim to come here to share what has been awesome in her career to engage audiences and staff and campers to share with the world of higher ed. A little bit about Kim, um, just back from a trip to Wisconsin, right? You just came back from Wisconsin? I did. I was in Wisconsin for two whole weeks um, um, at the summer camp where I got my start back between my sophomore and junior years in college. So I've been with this camp a long time, which is We'll just leave it at that. We'll let people sort of do the math in their head. Right. You know what I didn't say is where did you go back to? Where are you now? I am in North Carolina. I'm in yeah. Southport, North Carolina on the coast. Oh, so, that's awesome. You, yeah. can tell, you can kind of tell you have a little bit of a uh, the, the Carolina accent, don't you? I, you might say that. You might say that, right? Yeah. <laughs> the coastal Carolina. Okay. So, um, Kim is a um, obviously a speaker, but also you write for Camping Magazine and the American Camp Association blogs. You connect and motivate learners of all ages through your presentations, both virtually and in person. And I want to talk to you about that because I think you were doing virtual before we all went virtual. I, I think I remember that you said that from the stage one time. Uh, and you, you've been a teacher for thir more than 35 years. That's what, what subject were you teaching when you were in the schools? I was a math teacher, your, yeah. your favorite teacher of all time, right? Yeah, you were. Yeah. Wow. You, so, and you obviously, so you've been in front of folks a lot and, and I guess a, a good name for you, you're a master teacher. Like, is that what happens when you get to year 20? When do you become a master teacher? I think you become a master teacher when you realize that you, you learn just as much from your students as they learn from you and possibly oh, wow. even, okay. even, even more. So. That's, um, yeah, that's very cool. Hey, so the, the, the idea that you did a presentation virtually prior to the world uh, facing COVID, um, and I think it, I'm going to try to get the story right, that you did it. You've been invited to camps to do staff training from your home and the entire staff is at camp. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So several years ago, um, a camp director friend of mine called me up and she just said, hey, I'm really toying around with this idea. Yeah. Staff, staff meetings are really hard in the middle of the summer. And she said, it's hard for me to plan for them. It's hard for staff to sit through them. And so she said, I would love to see what your thoughts are if we could sort of, uh, you know, pipe you in, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's more cost effective for the camp because then I can be with them multiple times during the summer. Um, versus just coming in like for one time, you know, so right. I was able to build that relationship with them. And I've also worked with them in person too. So it's, so that's also part of it. Um, so yeah. it, it kind of makes sense, but we did a trial run. I, I offered to do a trial run months before the summer with another, you know, group that she had there just to see right. if she even liked it. And she said, you know, she gave me the big thumbs up when we were finished. And so we've been doing it ever since. I've done it for three or four years now, so. Oh, no kidding. So do you, do they just have a camera on the room and you see the group? That's right. I see and the group and then I'm on the big, on the big screen. On the big screen, so, right? Yeah. 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 Well, so. that's cool. That's really, what a cool idea. So really it, it opens up the options for any of the, um, I guess the keynote speakers, the workshop facilitators to do an in-person event and then to follow up months and months after, which is exactly what you did. So that's a cool idea for for colleges, right? To, yeah. to have guests come back again and again. Um, so what can higher ed learn from summer camp? I, I emailed you once upon a time uh, because you had already been doing virtual events and I was just getting started. And I, I know you have a reputation for your events being lots of fun. So I asked you, how can I incorporate fun and content? And you emailed me back a list. Now, is it okay if I just say one at a time and then you talk about it? Sure, why not? Okay. Um, your first one was to get other people involved in the organization of it. If you know that you're doing an event, put a team together. Exactly. I mean, I think that's first and foremost, because I think so many times we think we have to do this on our own. And really, um, if we kind of crowdsource it with our organization or our audience, they, and it, and it, 
creates buy-in for them and it really empowers um, other folks. Um, I've been doing some work with summer camps. We just did something last night um, and one of the gals, you know, I had several people who were helping plan it and orchestrating it and facilitating it. And, and I was just kind of helping them through the process, but they right. kind of, they kind of ran the show. Um, so I, I, I can't stress that enough not to, yeah. to use the people that you have. Um, right. Great idea. Cause it, it also, you, you can delegate as well. Yeah. yeah. You can delegate um, yeah. as, as the organizer, right? Um, important one, if you're going to do handouts prior to the meeting, email them ahead of time. Yeah. I mean, again, that seems sort of obvious, but I, you know, like in this situation with working with uh, the, the staff training, I would yeah. always, you know, send it ahead of time. So that way when I pop on the screen or, you know, um, if we're doing it, if they're in their individual homes, they can, they, they can already have printed it out. They have something to refer to and they know, you know, they kind of get a little bit of a preview as to what's coming right. Um, right. When, when, when we get together. So. And that's, that's very deliberate and it's, it takes less time out of your actual in, in, interaction okay. with them because you're not sharing your screen. You're not sharing a PDF file or asking them to download something in the moment. They've right. already done it, so that's a great idea. And, right. and we're going to talk about sharing screen because you do also do that, right? Um, you said make sure you practice screen sharing and other virtual techniques, right? Yes, because I kind of learned the hard way when you know you want to pop in this really great video and you hit play, yeah. and then you get these all these people in the chat are saying we can't hear you, we can't hear uh -huh. the video, right. you know, and right. then and so I'm like, oh my gosh, what what's what's you know, what's behind that. And so, right. um, so pr always I've learned that you just got to practice all of those things. Right. And if you know your internet connection is not going to be the greatest. So in doing these summer camp events, sometimes like when I was in Wisconsin, we know that our internet connection is not the best up, you know, where we yeah. are. So yeah. we make sure that someone else who has a strong internet connection, you know, one, one of our, folks is they're yeah. the ones sharing the video so, so that they, they can, can share the, you can share the videos from colorado yes right so it really the beauty of the virtual yes. is that your your team can be all over the place yes yes right and that way oh, but you know that they're gonna be crisp and there's not gonna right. be this awful delay and all those kinds right. of things and that matters a lot for video streaming yes that, that really does um in there you you said plan for every minute over plan Oh my gosh. I have no, I had no idea how with virtual um, events, how you really, to me, they're harder than doing them in person because uh -huh. you have to really have it. You have to have a good plan so that you can sure. kind of roll with it. Um, when you're doing in person events, I find you can read the audience better. You kind of know, mm -hmm. you can sense a little more of the flow, but um, I feel like time is of the essence and you don't, we just with you know video content or virtual content yeah. we, people aren't very patient <laughs> you know right. yeah, so yeah. if they sense that you're not organized or that you don't have a plan then i think that's when people kind of drift off and so i like to always plan for more than i need um and just be ready to, you know not to say that i have to follow the script to the letter but you can always adapt but that you've thought it through enough that you really know you know what each block of time is going to be like right right so there's a there's a solid conclusion and a transition to the next bit absolutely like, i guess that's true like live you can you know you could let laughter go on for two or three minutes or you could let questions go on like but in the virtual if everyone's muted and you really are teaching um and you finish your point and there's there's no reaction from which for you to gauge you know um that that's a really good point plan 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 but what you also said was you don't have to stick to it yeah, right. right. You, you, you should, you, you will be able to do it. Okay. This is one about the beginning. Have something for the audience to do while waiting for the program to start. So this is as they're coming in. Yeah. As the room is opening up, if you, right. you know, have something, and this is, this again, sets the stage. This lets them yeah. know that you are going to start on time. Yeah. It shows that you're pre uh, prepared. <laughs> um, and so that might be, you know, playing some music or having a slideshow. One of my things that I like to do is play music with a slideshow and have right. some, some good, really good quotes that get them thinking. And uh -huh. then we can come back to those quotes later. Um, or if you have a question posed on the screen or, you know, just something to get them um, engaged in the learning before we yeah. ever start. 
Great idea. Music, I love music. So adding music to anything for me is yes. makes complete sense. Um, all right, so bring extra energy and enthusiasm to the meeting and event. Bring extra energy and enthusiasm. Right. Why? Why? Because in person, you definitely have to have energy and enthusiasm. Yeah. But it's, it's again, it's that whole being able to read your audience. And it's, yeah. it's hard. I mean, sometimes you'll see people nodding their head or you may see mm -hmm. a smile. Um, but that's, you, it's not enough to keep. So I find just as with anything, and if you yeah. keep your energy and enthusiasm up, then the audience is also going to be more just excited about what it is because you're excited. Right. In the world that you spend a lot of time, summer camp, summer camps are fun. Yeah. Right. So the content is fun, but there's no reason why you can't apply that same uh, beginning of a meeting attitude to a budget meeting with student government. Right. Yeah. If student government is coming onto the screen and they're all showing up at four o'clock for the meeting and they know it's going to be an hour long conversation about budgets. Why not have a cool slideshow with music plan, with inspirational quotes in it? That's a, a really cool idea. Um, and then connection before content, right? Connect before content. Tell me about that. Well, that's one I, I, I've really been paying more attention to yeah. recently, but I think so often we tend to just jump right into the content that we have, forgetting right. that there's people on the other side who would like to know something about you right. or they would like to know something about the other people, especially if they don't know each other. It's a way in um, just to do a simple, you know, I like to do sometimes a simple poll just to say, you know, if you were to describe your current state of being um, as a weather term, what would that be? And so uh -huh. I'll have like sunny, partly cloudy, stormy, foggy, windy, you know, something, right, right, right. whatever, snow day. Uh -huh. um, and that way you sort of get a sense, like if everybody's sunny, you're like, okay, they're in a pretty good space and they're ready to go. Right, but if you get right. a lot of your group is partly cloudy or stormy, then they may not be quite ready for you to just jump in. So it's a, right. you know, just things to gauge um, how people are doing. Um, yeah. And then they, the audience gets to learn something about the other people who are on the call. Um, right. So. But you do that, you do that relatively quickly. You're not going around the room saying like, how are you? Right. No. How are you? Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, as much as you, you care about them, you still need to get to the content. Exactly. But you do are, you are making a connection. Um, breakout rooms. When breakout rooms are being assigned, have a plan for what the group is doing while they're being assigned. What do you mean there? So I've found myself being like, if I'm the sole person running the meeting or the running yeah. the call, to put them into breakout rooms, if I'm being um, doing it manually, if I'm not just putting them in, you know, random groups, random, if random I want to have, because usually ahead of time, we already know, I already know who's going to be facilitating conversations in each room. Gotcha. So I got to make sure that they're in the right room. And then I want to, you know, sometimes I uh, will put people by age or sometimes I'll put them by, who have a mixture of ages. And so... Okay. Um, that takes time. And so instead of them waiting for me to do all that, I have somebody lead something else so that I can be kind of behind the scenes doing it. And when they're done, I'm, I'm ready to go. Right. Um, and I've also learned some tricks about, um, and I learned some of this from you about how um, when we did Camp For You, you put your name and your, you rename yourself with your name and your location. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I'll have them rename themselves with their name. And if age matters or a particular, you know, uh, I was doing a training where they were in different leadership groups. And so right. they put their leadership letter there. So oh, then cool. when I put them in rooms, I could easily do it because I knew where, you know, because they had indicated something um, to help me with That's that. Cool. So, yeah. So I, I have a new one that I learned the other day from another really awesome virtual Ooh. facilitator. Tell so me. Come in, you come into the group and you've given those, you've given those um, windy, cloudy, partly cloudy. So it could be Kim, sunny, or Kim, partly cloudy. But then halfway through the event, because you've, you've, you've brought their energy level up, you say, now, how do you feel now? So throughout the meeting, they can change their emotion. So Jason could have started cloudy, but after meeting all these people and having a little bit more fun and feeling more connected to the to the to the folks in the meeting, I don't feel cloudy anymore. Now I'm Jason Sunny, right? I think it was really neat to know that you could you could use that same thing throughout the meeting. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, love I, I loved it too. Yeah. I'm gonna um, can I steal it?
Uh, yeah, I mean, this is the, that's that's why we're sharing all these things for everybody else to use, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, this one, this one on the list, I'm actually going to present this based on what's in parentheses at the end of it. Okay. And then you'll know because you wrote this list. All right. Okay. Stop in the name of love. All right. What does that mean? So. So thinking about, um, I like to give my, even though it's virtual, I still like to give my audience or my group time to process, time to marinate on whatever we just talked about. Um, but, um, and it may be they're having a, a discussion with somebody else in the, ch you know, uh, breakout rooms or whatever, but I love to have a way so that it's really obvious when it's time for them to refocus and come back to to you know whatever is going to happen next yeah so i um was just thinking about this one day and so I, here's the music so i went and i looked up on itunes all the yeah. different uh songs that have the word stop in them oh really so yeah so every time i had a transition i would play a different music piece of music that had stop so that was the first one um and then um i did you know don't stop believing you know? great song um, and so um, don't stop believing. Okay, exactly. But then I also had a little side contest. Is yeah. you could you know name the uh, uh, the um, the group, the you artist, know, right? The artist, exactly. Oh, I'm, I want I want to see that list. I, I'll stop the world and melt with you. Oh, that isn't even one I had with. On oh, that. well, you're welcome. Um, yeah, I love okay. that song. I love that song. So putting in stop and give people breaks to process what you've been doing. Um, next one on the list is break time into smaller chunks. So this is just a this is just a very yeah. smart teaching strategy, and that is to not you know it's kind of that. Um, um, serving a fruit salad versus serving, you know, a fruit basket. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. you break things up into bite-sized pieces so that they can, um, and just do one idea at a time. And so yeah. there's one idea and then maybe some little transition or a way to think about it, process it. And then another idea, right. um, that's just helps the brain. Cause ideally whatever you're presenting, it'd be really nice if they remembered something, right? right. I mean, that's, I mean, <laughs> Let's just be honest. We that's what we would like. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, and so by breaking it up into little chunks, and I bet you, like an example of this is, you know, when you say your phone number. Yeah. You don't give your phone number out like all the digits at once. You do right. like the prefix and then the area code and then the or the area code, the prefix right. and then the last four numbers, social security numbers, um, credit card numbers, all of that. You chunk it. And so that's how the right. brain remembers things if we can put it in smaller right. bits. Yeah. Right. That's really interesting. And, 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 and it's very deliberate on the part of the folks who created those because of the studies that have been done. Yeah. You know, 10 digits is not easy to remember, but when you break it down into and sonically, it's easy to remember too. like 615-336-4759. Right? It's like a TV announcer. There you go. Um, uh, you like to use the chat, uh, the Q&A. Yeah, you like to use the chat, don't you? Well, just to, um, this is another way that we want to engage our, you know, yeah, um, yeah. folks, right? And that is keep them engage, involved, respond to a question or to, right. you know, give some feedback to something that you've said, um, like, oh, I really like this or, you know, that kind of thing. And I love, I'm going to, I love the super chat that you do. Um, I'm sure you've already talked about that somewhere in your. Not yet. Let's yeah. talk about it right now. Yeah. Can, no, I have not. Yeah. I've done very little about talking about me and I'm trying to stay away from it, but yeah. Yeah, let's go for it. No, because yeah. that's, that's huge because the reason why I like that so much. And so right. the super chat is for those of you who are listening to this um, is when you throw something out there, a question and you want everyone to respond. But as we know, as, uh, you know, educators, we know that if somebody responds quickly, then everyone else just sort of doesn't think on their own of what their response may be. Mm -hmm. So giving that deliberate pause to think about what their answer is going to be or, uh, and then you say super chat and then everyone hits send at the same time. Yeah. And yeah. Blah, 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 all the yeah all and you get a list of answers it's it is fun it's and I, i've really gamified it by 
by making it a big deal, like being very overt, like whatever you do, don't hit send, don't hit return. Think of what you're gonna write, write it, but don't hit return, right? And then everyone's like, and you can see if, if the faces are there, and inevitably somebody might be like, hit it because they, it's, it's our instinct. We've finished typing, we hit, right. hit return. But it is a fun game. Um, and you also, you were the first person to talk to me about props. Right? I'd never considered props. Yeah, I mean, why not? That's what we do at camp, and we were always right. using yeah, props, course. right? So, and this was a situation where when I'm working with a, a, an audience who I'm being piped in, but everyone else is in the same room, I had to have, again, something to get their attention back to yeah. what's going to go right. next. So, because I wanted it to be interactive. I did not want me to be sitting up there talking the whole time. Right. So I used to put right. these big, I'd wear big sunglasses or I'd wear a funny hat. And yeah. I would tell my audience, hey, when you see me with the funny sunglasses or whatever, then you know, let's wrap up our conversation and it's time to move on to the next thing. Oh, so, wow. So use, use, use props as transitions as well. Yeah. Um, cool. And I've also done where in the same, uh, when I've been working with the same group multiple times, like especially if it's over the course, I'll, I'll work with them several times in the same day. I'll yeah. change shirts. To see, oh. if they, to see if they're paying attention. <laughs> How funny. Not in front of them. I'm not changing the shirt in front of them. I'm just, yeah. you know, <laughs> but. Um. but no, if you, do, if you do a breakout room and you're the facilitator, they're all somewhere else. You're alone. Yeah. You can go totally turn on like a, a panda costume or something, right? How fun. Okay. Um, no abrupt endings. I think so often we just, we're like, okay, oh, we look at our watch. Oh, it's time to go chip chop. Look, we got to break, break this up. But then we, yeah. we missed an opportunity for our audience to really let's, let's marinate one more time about all the things that we've learned or maybe the, that right. last point that was made. Um, and so just, it only takes, you only have to do it for 60 seconds, you know, yeah. uh, just yeah, yeah, yeah. that time. Um, so that you can kind of tie that bow on whatever it is that you just presented. Right. Um, so um, otherwise it's going to go out the door, out the window. Right. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just, it's, it's very, and, and we're in a strange space. Now, it's not so strange anymore, but the abrupt ending to a gathering of people in person, people linger off slowly, mm. right? Yeah. And, and, and maybe we leave that space for slow lingering. And if you're the facilitator, don't hit end like create the event and say like all right well say goodbye and you can leave at your own pace I, you know maybe that works too um you also preview your next meeting with the group before you end it yeah so if we're going to meet again yeah yeah so we that way we, we can kind of get some build some excitement it's you know right. that whole idea of when you watch a movie the you know the, the movie previews get you excited about the next the movies that are coming right. down the pike, right. you know, several months from now. Um, and so same idea, let them know, you know, kind of what's coming, what to expect, you know, if you wanted to bring something or if you um, have something that you might be emailing them that you need them to, right. you know, engage with before that, just kind of a, a chance to set the stage for what's coming next. Yeah, it's great. And and I mean, you could even say, and, and to create the excitement for the next event, you could say like, hey, next time, if, if you're there on time, we're giving away a ten dollar gift card in the first, you know, in the first minute. Incentivize the next meeting. Well, that's 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 good. And you do that before you close up. And then you do something that I think is an extra special thing after your event, right? Once once you've already ended the meeting, um, your final thing to me was follow up after the event, right? Yeah. With recordings, with links, with resources, with email. Um, and what, what what's important about that? Well, again, I just feel like, you know, it, we're miss, you'd miss an opportunity if you just ended it. I like to say that, you know, when I do a conference, when I do a conference yeah. in person, for example, right. um, all of my sessions, especially if I'm speaking multiple times at the same conference, right. each session that I do, I give them another sticker. I give them a sticker. And so that way, the people who were um, at, like, and I'll tell them, I said, so if every, you see anyone wearing a star sticker, you know you were in the same session. So the conference doesn't end, you know, the session doesn't oh. end 
yeah, it does. It, it, it doesn't have to be just in these four walls. So the yeah. conversation doesn't have to be just on this computer screen. Let's keep going or let's, you know, let's right. keep interacting. Let's, you know, and just even the, the follow up email with any links you might have talked about or and granted, right. they can get them from the chat. But I think it's just a nice touch if, if we provide we sort of hit the easy button for our, our yeah, that, that little, we're meeting with. Yeah. Right, but that, that little extra step goes a long way because if we even say as facilitators, like, yeah, just uh, save the chat. Yeah. Save the chat. And, and maybe not everybody gets to it or maybe they're on their phone, they don't know how to do that. Or, yeah. yeah, so really that, that follow-up is really, is really nice. Um, um, is, is there anything else you, you've been thinking about? Because this is the list that, that, that I have um, studied uh, you did your homework well. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm working with a master teacher, you know? <laughs> there you go. Um, um, I mean, I would just say sometimes I think I like to, I've really enjoyed this time because I think about events that I would have done in person, especially, yep. and I'm going back to the summer camp world, you know? Right. Okay. So what, what are things that we, we always do in the summertime? And then how can we do that virtually? And so, yeah. I mean, we've had counselor hunts, we've had, you know, games of Clue, um, yeah. because we would have played that normally. You yeah, know, yeah. We had a Dutch auction last night. And so just thinking about, um, challenge yourself to take the things that maybe you already do that's part of your normal um, right. sort of business as, you, yeah. business as usual. You know, if you do something at the beginning always, can you still do that thing at the beginning of your virtual? Or do you always, you know, end it a certain yeah. way, do yeah. it, you know, so, I mean, so in using summer camp example, um, we start every virtual event with the camp song uh -huh. and we end every virtual event with a good night song because we, you know, have a little, you know, group of campers that come around, the oldest campers right. and tell everybody good night. So we do oh, those, same so things. Sweet. So we so do those same things even yeah. virtually. And it and it really uh, for for campers it creates a real neat consistency. Yeah. Right. So there's there's a, there's a level of predictability for for somebody, yeah. but that level of predictability is comforting to even adults, right? It's not like if you know that you're going to do something at the beginning of every meeting that's engaging, um, and you have a, a standard greeting or like it, you know if you're the if you're an advisor and you're meeting with students all the time, you know there's 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 something for the student who's going to come to your event or your your meeting with them to know that to know it's going to go a certain way. Yeah, New Kim, that was my computer. That was my computer making the ding dong ding. I yeah. think it was mine. No, it was mine. It, it was, was mine. mine. <laughs> but if you want to own it, go for it because <laughs> that puts me out, takes me off the hook. <laughs> no, I just think. But then again, it's this is again like even when we plan for every minute. Yeah. Even when we plan for every minute, there's always a little something that could happen, right? There could be a lightning storm in the town next door and the internet could go out here. And we, exactly. have no, like, we don't have any control over that. So we can learn a lot from summer camps, obviously, right? And, and, and it, I think it's really neat that you've been doing it, that you were doing virtual before, before virtual was a thing, um, yeah. you know, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, and you've been, and you've been, educating and working with groups for a long time so it's, it's really nice to have you sort of on the team for this higher education event so thanks for being here yeah um, it's my pleasure your information is going to be on the page that's associated with the summit so folks can get in touch with you or see your website and learn about your events and your workshops and your keynotes um again thank you thank you thank you thank you thank bye. you bye